argument should not be any reason why you don't score an outstanding score on an essay. You're a teenager, right? You argue? Argue effectively? Do you argue effectively? Yes. Oh, so today we're going to do some things that are going to help you to move your arguments to outstanding, sophisticated, top of the world, changing the world. Right, what kind of essays have you written so far? Persuasive, which is the same as argument. Persuasive. Generally, persuasive is when you will attempt to get somebody to do something, think a certain way. Argument takes that to a more sophisticated level and adding depth and analysis to it with lots of evidence. So I'm just going to, I'm, not that I will remember, apologize, I'm well over 50, so I will not know your name, so I'll generally call you on you by what you're wearing, um, it's just the easiest thing to do. But I would like to know just simply your name, first name, why you're taking AP language, be honest, if mom made me, mom made me, if just because my friends are, friends are, I don't know why, just whatever reason, and favorite classic book that you have read. Don't tell me the Bible, don't tell me Magic Tree House, something that you can use on the AP exam. If you don't like to read and you have no favorites, then that would be the best of the worst. The best of the worst that you have read. And the reason why is we'll use those as we go through some of the argument to help you to understand a few things. All right, just quickly, name, why are you taking AP, favorite book? <laughs> Best of the worst that you've read. I'm coming back to you at the end. Think of it. Probably. I don't really know what to do. I don't have it. Coming back to you as well. Um, Alex, I took it to. Um, get those extra points. Yeah, GPA. <laughs> and um, I just read the scarlet letter, so I'm going to roll with that. I don't roll know. with the scarlet letter. We'll be able to use that in a little bit. Um, my name is Wesley. Um, I took AP in the bonus points to the regular GPA, and I don't really read that much. I don't either. I'm the English teacher. I don't read that much. But what's the best of the worst you got? Uh, um, Oh, no, no, we'll, we'll use that. Let's go to Kill Kill Mockingbird. We've got lots of things to do with them. My name is Cody. My teacher made me take AP. My teacher made me do it. That's better than and, some uh, things. Uh, Just go ahead and go with what somebody else said. Look at y'all. They're making it easy for you. Go. My name is Haley. I don't really know why I took AP, and I'll go with um, Gabby, uh, my teacher said I would be fine in AP. Flattery always works. And uh, <laughs> uh, I guess Molly, and I took it for the extra points, and then probably the Scarlet Letter. My name is Riley Cocars, and uh, I took it. For, I took it to start to challenge myself, and I like Scarlet Letter. My name is Seth Jones. Hello, Seth Jones. <laughs> I took it because it was there, and my favorite book is The Odyssey. Good. I'm Kayla, and I guess I took it to challenge myself, and I'll go with this little walking I love this, I'll go with. Um, I'm Kayla, and I'm here for the first two or three minutes, so I'm here, and I'm cool. My name is Jay, um, <laughs> take it for the bonus points, and I'm going to go with this to go with my name. Everything's the same. Uh, my name 
name's Colin, and I took a teacher's calls. And, um, Are you just calls people regretting about now? Yes. Oh, yeah, I knew mean, somebody's going to be having some doubts. I don't regret it, I just did it. Not a classic book, however, you can use that in AP language, not in AP Lit, because you can use about anything in AP language. I'm Emily. I took AP for the points in my favorite book. Oh, one of my favorite as well. Wow, I miss teaching it. I'm Karen, and college resume. Always looks good on college resume. Just a little tidbit. How many of you are making grades lower than you ever have before? Okay. <laughs> B's and C's in AP mean more than A's in a regular class. Colleges, college resume, they're going to look at that. So you can have all A's on a transcript and be in a basic curriculum, and you're going to stand out more if you have C's in AP classes. I don't know, you get those extra points to make up for that, but please don't stress about your grades. I don't know that book. My name is Jerry. No, you won't be bored. Um, I said the piece. Ah, interesting. I'm Hannah, and I took a piece off in college. I'm Mary Grace. I have to pay for the extra points. Okay, I'm Olivia, and I don't know why I took it. And um, I like the Divergent series because that's the only book. It's a lot. Um, mine's Abigail and I'll select my second one. Um, my name is Brenna. I took it for the extra points and my very books that's it for these. Uh Emily, I took it for the extra points and all over with the shot. Oh my gosh, love all over with the shot. Did y'all do that for a class assignment? All over with the shot? Nobody right, 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 right down the street from where I live. All right, so a lot of you don't know why you took it. You took it for extra points, and some of you, oh, maybe you want the challenge. Um, that's college credit. Generally, you, I mean, you're in a very good situation. Somebody's going to pay for you to take the test, so you're not losing anything. And if you pass the test, college credit plus hundred dollars. Wow. So you're in a win-win situation, other than I've got to do a lot of work. So what's your favorite thing that you have done in your AP class so far? <laughs> Problem. Uh, what? Oh, uh, no, AP language. We played this game with whiteboards where it's like a vocab game. Yeah. 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 All right, play a vocab game. We can use that vocab. Where is something else you've done that you've enjoyed? Seminar. Socratic seminar. Is that the first time you've done a seminar? Yeah. Alright, so a seminar, if you're thinking about your seminar that you did, a seminar is designed to improve your thinking, increase dialogue. So it's trying to get you not, not challenging somebody or debating, but to increase dialogue and understanding of a topic. But the three main things that you're going to have to do on the AP exam, rhetorical analysis, I've got to analyze this piece of analysis it's written. I've got to synthesize. I've got to put stuff together. That's what I did first session, synthesis. And then the other thing, which is my favorite and should be yours, is I've got to argue. I've got to argue. So today we're going to look at how am I going to make that argument better. So if somebody, my parents are making me do it, or my teacher said I should, what did they say to you? What did they do? Of course, parents have a little bit of leverage right there, right? You want somebody to take AP next year, or maybe not to take AP next year. What evidence are you going to give them that this is a good or a bad thing? So if I'm telling people, you need to take AP language. AP language, my position, I've got to have a position. So when you argue, you have to have a position. State what your position is. Never say, I think, I feel, or I believe. Because that makes it look like it's just you. You state your position as fact. You should take AP language to make your college career easy. You should take AP language to make your life easier. No matter what you're going to major in. What's your major going to be? What do you want to do when you grow up? Um, something medicine. medicine. What do you want to do? Um, mechanical engineering. Mechanical engineering. What do you want to do? Nurse. What do you want to do? Engineering. engineering. Anybody besides engineering medical field? Pretty much what we want to do? Welding. Welding. What else? Business. Business. 
everything that you've mentioned, you're going to have to have the ability to effectively argue. My son-in-law is a missile defense engineer at Red Star. My daughter that he's married to is an attorney. My middle son, one of my middle sons is a nurse. The other son is a sports journalist. The youngest child is a freshman at Penn State, sophomore at Penn State. So she's going to be an exercise science kinesiologist. Every single one of them is going to use argument. Please tell me how my engineering child is going to use, how my engineering son uses argument. He has to write reports. Unfortunately, you know what he said when he spoke to my AP class? I wish somebody told me how much I was going to be writing and speaking as an engineer. He designs missiles. Tell me why he would argue. That his design is better. Right? That his design is better than somebody else. He's going to get the United States government to build buy into his design. And what does he have to do with that? He's got to give them evidence. So on your paper, somewhere on the margin, it's not just arguing. You have to argue with evidence. you got to prove it with evidence. Just jot it down somewhere on that page 34. How does my nurse son use argument? Yeah, i got to convince you, you need to do this to get better. I've got to convince you with argument. It's obvious how my attorney daughter uses argument, right? That, that's just all argument. What about my exercise science kinesiology major who's still in college? What's she going to use argument for? What? Exercise science, like strength and conditioning, she's an Olympic athlete, was in the 2016 Olympics. She's a shot putter. And so she's majoring in exercise science, strength and conditioning. Which training is better? Do what? Which training is better? Which training is better? You come to her, strength and conditioning, you're an athlete, she's on the track team at Penn State. Let's say she stays there forever. Here's this athlete, she's got to convince this football player, here's what you need to do if you want more power coming off the ball. She's got to convince you that this exercise is better, that this strength and conditioning is what's going to get you to the goal that you want. So argument with evidence. She can't just tell you. She's got to prove that to you with evidence. Could be scientific evidence. Could be an athlete that she's already worked with. What does Tom Brady do that keeps him wanting to play until he's 40, 42, 43? His what? His diet. So somebody, if Tom Brady, if somebody else wants to continue a Tom Brady-like career, Tom Brady's given evidence just by his life. He doesn't have to say anything. His evidence is, I can do it. Look what I've eaten all this time. Only organic. So what we're going to look at today is how to use specific evidence. So I want you to turn your paper all the way over with the empty space on the back and write this acronym down, specific evidence. Just the blank, blank paper, space on the back and write down H places. H places. sports for anything. Kids, use what you know. Some of you are good history people, use that. Some of you are good science people, use that. The great thing about AP language in your argument, you build on what your strength is. You can be a pretty bad writer as long as you've got a good argument. You don't have to be the world's greatest writer. Do y'all know how the essays are scored in AP? The essays are scored on a 1 to 9 scale. These are your top papers. These are, man, so what argument. So this is all three essays. These, no, we don't want to do that. I can be a 
very average writer. I write fragments, misspell words, not even get my subject verb agreement right. I can have a good argument with evidence and I'm making a 7-8 essay. So the key is, for this exam, the great thing about AP language is your thoughts matter. And now we got to get somebody convinced. Like I said, don't use I think, I feel, or I believe. All right, so we're looking at making sophisticated arguments. I'm going to give you something that you know. <clears throat> should know. Great other thing about the AP exam, they're going to ask you about the topics you should know. So here's something you should know about. You should all have a position. In order to effectively educate students, schools must enforce a dress code. I want you to write your position down. It's a one word position. You read that statement, formulate your position. What is your position on that statement? One word. One word position. That's how easy a argument is. A one word position. This pops up on the AP argument exam. In order to effectively educate students, schools must enforce a dress code. Again, you can have a very, very sophisticated argument and average writing. Okay, here's how we do this. We're going to argue this with evidence. So I want you now to write down what you think is the strongest piece of evidence 
using eight places, just one piece, only what you want one, for your position. If you say no, schools don't need a dress code. Now, I'm talking very specific. Name something specific that either happened in history, politics, literature, arts, current events, experience, entertainment, or sports or science. Something specific. Somebody's name, some wall, some event. What would be your strongest evidence? All you know people, you're trying to convince the three yeses. What's your strongest piece of evidence to convince them? You yes people, you're trying to convince them. What's your strongest piece of evidence? Not a sentence. Just one piece of evidence. What do you think that would be? Just one piece of evidence. You need an example. I'm going to argue to you that you should all take a, that students should take AP language. What's my evidence? My son, who is a missile defense engineer, uses argument every day. Okay, I use my son. That's my evidence. But this is effective. So all I would put is personal experience, my son. 